Hey everyone, Ryan here, or MNR Productions, with my review of one of my all-time favorite LEGO Star Wars sets. It's the 7264 Imperial Inspection from 2005, with 367 pieces recommended for ages 8 and up. Coincidentally, I was 8 when this set came out in 2005, so that worked out well. However, I have not had the chance to own this set until now, so this is my first experience with the set. I'm really excited to do a review on it. It retailed for 50 bucks upon its release and adjusted for inflation. That's about $65 in 2020 money. However, if you want to buy this set new in the box on eBay, you're going to be looking at somewhere in the range of $300. So it definitely went up a lot in value. And something this set touts on the front of its box is its new Stormtroopers. At the time, these were new Stormtroopers. And well, they never found their way into another set. This Stormtrooper design, for whatever reason, was only ever used in this set. There are 10 minifigs total in this set for a $50 set. That is incredible. For reference, a lot of LEGO Star Wars sets in today Today's world that cost upwards of $200 include like three minifigures a lot of the time. So it would be nice to see Lego bring sets back like this where they include so many figures with maybe a little bit of a smaller build, but that's just not something they do nowadays. You can see all the figures laid out on the top with a couple Imperial Commanders, the four Stormtroopers, Vader, the Royal Guards, and Emperor Palpatine. Can we just take a moment, one more moment, to appreciate how beautiful this box art is? It is one of my favorite sets, like I said, but it's also one of my favorite box arts just from a beauty standpoint. It's got that Lego Star Wars original trilogy edition logo down there. Flipping the box around, you get a look at some 2004 sets with the X-Wing, the Falcon, the TIE Fighter, and the TIE Fighter collection. So they show off some nice sets up there. You can see a couple of these sets really outdated looking versus the other ones. It shows off the shuttle and its features, of course, because you want to make a good sale on the Imperial shuttle. And it has an alternate build. This alternate build is somewhat similar to the build on the 7166 Imperial shuttle. However, it's not the same. It's kind of looking to me like the Last Supper, except it's certainly an assembly line of Stormtroopers. It just has that look a little bit to me with the giant mech behind it. So there's your Lego Star Wars mech, even though Lego doesn't make Lego Star Wars mechs. And our first character up is an Imperial Commander, of which you receive two in the set. And usually I would think and call these guys Imperial Officers, but on the box they call it an Imperial Commander. So just a slight uh, naming difference there. No back print or leg print or arm print or waist print. This is 2005, but for 2005, 2005, I will say this is pretty much on the higher end of Imperial Officer style figures for sure. It's not going to be the biggest draw for the set, but including two is a really nice bonus. Next up, you receive a pair of Imperial Royal Guards who remained unchanged from their predecessors in 2001 here. They have the same hard cape. You have a pretty decent torso print and one that hasn't, again, changed much even into 2020. You just have an all red look, which is really neat looking. And they made a great mold for the helmet for the Imperial Guards because they have not changed that in 20 years either. And then underneath, they are still using that black head, which works perfectly. And perhaps a huge draw for a lot of of people looking at this set were these brand new stormtroopers of which you received four of in the set which is great usually in bigger sets nowadays you get one or two and this was a $50 set and you got four of them so I wish Lego would take notes from old sets like this in that regard but they did a great job with these stormtroopers other than with the head underneath the helmet I think these are some of the better looking stormtroopers Lego ever produced and obviously changing out the head is not a big deal but as a purist myself I wouldn't go in and change that because I like to stay pure to the way they produce the sets but you get a yellow head underneath which is a little bit awkward because like there's no face on it so if they were trying to give you like a skin for your stormtrooper here it doesn't work well because you still don't have a face there and i have quite a bit of a smudge on my print there on this particular one and it actually looks like it may be an issue across the board here with these stormtroopers but i think i've kind of missed the mark here a little bit the biggest draw for these particular stormtroopers was their leg printing that was something we just didn't get on stormtroopers in the early days and still didn't see for a long long time after this because they kind of just went away from it again which is kind of a shame but you do have really nice leg printing with the waist printing connecting up almost perfectly there so that's what made this stormtrooper particularly special special compared to the other ones released around the same time and again it's kind of unfortunate we didn't see these carried throughout uh, the future years of lego star wars Despite not having a lightsaber, Darth Vader is included in the set. This is one of the few times that I can remember Darth Vader just not having a lightsaber. And Legos made a lot of Darth Vaders in different sets, so kind of odd. But the older style Darth Vader probably will always be my favorite style for Darth Vader. It's just such a classic and simplistic look. Underneath the head, you'll find a gray face there with a little bit of red markings in the cuts to show some flesh, which is actually a really nice touch on this older character that I think a lot of people may overlook. But overall, Darth Vader absolutely kills 
killer look. And finally, Emperor Palpatine, whose robes look great. He's got a black cape. You're not gonna have a back print or anything, but I love the older style Lego hoods as well. And then he, like Darth Vader, has some gray skin there and it looks really good. You can see he's got yellow eyes, which really pop on the character, especially with that hood on. They just really pop out of the darkness there. So Palpatine, a great character. And again, that's 10 minifigures total. This is one of the best minifigure selections ever, probably in a Lego Star Wars set, especially under $100 for 10 minifigs at 50 bucks US. That's insane. So great figure selection. Definitely can't knock this set for that. Something I think made this set particularly great as a playset were these particular items here. You had this vehicle which could transport cargo throughout the hangar, and then you also had a nice stationary bit that would be basically built into the Death Star or whatever, but obviously since it's not the whole Death Star, this isn't built into it, but it's got a little crane, it's got a turret on top to take down maybe enemies that came into the hangar. You have a little windshield piece and even blue lightsaber pieces which look a little bit out of place, but a fine detail I suppose. You also have some your stormtroopers weapons on the side of this they actually just put them in there for storage but these are really nice weapons these are some of my favorite weapons lego ever makes is these big ones here so one of my favorites from the old days of lego star wars they don't really use those anymore to give to characters but still just absolute classics there uh maybe something odd is that the control panel is showing the death star trench run when this is taking place on the death star it just feels you know a little morbid if you're if you're the designer of the death star and you put the death star trench run in image in for your uh, control panel there. Little thing, but something odd. Uh, you have a couple of swiveling chairs on this particular platform and the turret up top also it can move, but obviously it can also uh, pop off very easily. So you gotta kind of hold it down while you move the turrets around and you can move it left and right. So nice mobility there. It's just not like a strong build like you would expect in a more modern Lego Star Wars set. I actually quite like the railing design, although it was a little bit awkward to build because you have to kind of shorten the connection that the railing is actually making inside the brick because otherwise the railing won't actually uh, fill the length, which is a bit odd. And then as far as the crane goes, it's actually a really nice design as well. You're gonna have to hold down the platform because otherwise you know, you're just gonna tip it over, but you can move the crane arm a little bit. Obviously, it's not like a solid connection holding uh, whatever it's going to be holding here. In this case, just an empty bin, unfortunately empty. But you do have a much larger bin on your cargo transport here that you could come in and have the crane try to uh, pick up and lift away. It's a bit tough. However, it is uh, potentially doable. And you can see it holds. It's a lot more awkward than the smaller container. So I suggest not bothering with this larger container, which is also empty, although you could put uh, the other Stormtroopers weapons or whatever you want to uh, into here. Here's a better look at the connection on this little vehicle, as well as what it's holding in the back with a wrench and a saw as well. So quite a complete set in that way with this extra bit of scenery and vehicle uh, for the interior of the Death Star where the shuttle is landing. So the shuttle, of course, does go nicely with the rest of the set. It makes sense. You have the people that are waiting for it to arrive, and then it finally arrives. And so unfortunately there's no like loading ramp or anything up underneath the uh cockpit of the shuttle that's just non-existent doesn't drop anything down and the biggest gripe i actually have with this particular imperial shuttle is that it is bar a small change at the back which we'll get to and the fact that they went from the older grays to the newer grays on this newer shuttle because they had just swapped over to that a year or so prior in lego star wars this is the exact same imperial shuttle as the 7166 imperial Imperial shuttle. So uh, they didn't really change the design over the course of four years, which is a little bit disheartening. Usually nowadays when Lego does a remake, they at least go in and change the design. But um, back then they did not. That being said, I still think this one really is a better complete package uh, compared to the other one. But it is still a bit sad to have seen the design not change after four years there. But moving on from that, the cockpit of the shuttle is nicely detailed with a print there, which is kind of like a white screen with a couple of lines running vertically. I've gone over this in my review of the 7166 Imperial Shuttle, so I'll give you kind of the spark notes. You can check out that other review if you want a little bit more in depth on all this, but nice print up top and then a control panel inside with a couple of studs on either side. And you do have space to place a minifigure or two inside the cockpit of the shuttle, although I usually prefer to just put one in there because it would be a bit tight to fit two, although I'm sure you can if you are 
smart with your space. There's a little extra space even behind the pilot there. So they do give you a little bit of extra room if you do want to take advantage of it. But we get one of the Imperial commanders in there and we can have him act as the pilot. There are multiple weapons on the front of the shuttle here uh, using some weak connections, I will say. But they work, I suppose. If you don't hit them, they won't really fall out. You can touch them and whatnot. But if you hit them uh, off axis, they are going to be coming on down. And that's a bit of a shame. You have a well-printed ventilation piece at the top of the shuttle there which is a great additional detail. And then the wings on this set are really good for as small as they are. They are uh, like 10 pieces to build the wings, but it is just a solid build. It does what it needs to do. And it's it's a no frills Imperial shuttle experience, I think. I think that's the best way to describe this particular Imperial shuttle. It doesn't do anything special particularly, but it does everything solidly with minimal part usage, which is an interesting way to look at the set. And so holding the set at the body is probably gonna be ideal because the fin on this set is only connected by bricks. There's no Technic connection holding it into the body or anything like that. So you could certainly conceivably uh, wear down that connection and eventually have the shuttle break in your hands as you're flying it around and playing with it. So would really recommend staying away from holding the shuttle like that and more hold it with the body where you should be pretty safe there. And if you didn't notice, the wings do pop on down like that. They they have the nice uh, Technic connectors that uh, move it kind of in sections there so you can have it stay in different uh, orientations if you'd like or if you're doing a stop motion it'd be pretty easy to work it up on into a landing position and drop on down onto its landing gear which is pretty simple uh, there it's nothing special as far as landing gear goes I use that a lot in the early days of Lego Star Wars in 2005 2006 were kind of the last years we really saw things like this on the bottom of Lego Star Wars sets this was kind of the last of a a generation there if you will for lego stars but still a, a decent enough system you will just find that they will pop off quite easily if you bump into them and this does lead us to the back of the ship where the main change from the 2001 version of the Imperial Shuttle build itself comes. Obviously, the sets themselves are substantially different. But as far as the build goes, the one real change to me was that there were a couple of antenna pieces here that were pointing out the back, kind of as uh, rear weapons. And in this case, they went ahead and moved it down to be just one antenna on the back as your rear blaster. And it can just move up and down, just like the other ones can move up and down, maybe a little bit more uh, stunted with their movement because of the things in the way up here but they kind of left this space blank. Just kind of like a reminder that something was there. It's weird to me that they didn't go in and fill that space. It would have just made sense to maybe bring in a couple more of these textured pieces and that would have just fit in really perfectly there. But instead they left the space open, which to me doesn't make sense. I would love to know what the designer was thinking with that particularly. It's just such an odd thing to leave open. It certainly isn't open on the UCS one, which would be my uh, bar for uh, what would be accurate and not there. But yeah, anyway, uh, it can move up and down and that's fine and dandy. And then the other main change, I suppose, which is kind of a downgrade in my opinion, because it was a much smoother connection here on the bottom in the previous model because they were using an older piece that was just smoother. And so in this case, they moved to something newer here. And so you can see it moves down in sections, just like the wings. But the problem with that is that it's just not as easy to get it to go down and whatnot. So you kind of get this ramp style thing that you can pull out this area here, which is going to be for your two royal guards and the emperor to take a seat on. And you can have Darth Vader awaiting their arrival at the back there. But uh, the problem with this is that you're going to have to bend some capes. So these are the older style Lego capes. And so when you have to bend them, they don't really always go back to their original form perfectly. And that was something that was certainly a problem until very recently with Lego Star Wars. You know, 15 years later, they were still trying to fix that issue. But um, you can fit three characters on this little platform here, and it does have the staffs for the Royal Guards. So it's a nice kind of all-in-one storage solution, but it is very tight. As you can see, the Royal Guards are getting a little too close for comfort there. And then Palpatine is just kind of sitting out there in the back in his private suite, if you will, stud back. Like, it's just not a lot of space. But there's the best look I can kind of give you on the interior of the shuttle there and an even better look at the openness of the back area where they had moved some pieces from the prior model. Again, doesn't make sense to me why they didn't just go in and at least add a couple more of these tan cylindrical pieces or add some more of those gray textured pieces. Like there were a couple of moves you could have done and made that a much better design at the back there, but they did not do. And I'm still, I, I would like to know. Something I almost forgot to mention is that the designer of this set is Henrik Anderson and he also designed 7166, the 2001 version of this build. 
And on his brick set notes about the set, he claims he was able to hide a two by four green brick in this white weasel. And you can see that two by four green brick in there. So sometimes when they use those weird colors on the interior, it could be a little note from the designers to say, hey, this is mine type of thing. So that's kind of a neat thing to know about this set and also the 7166 version of this build. But anyway, uh, you can slide this right on in there on the tiled pieces and it fits in perfectly. Not a big deal at all. Then you can close that up. They fit in nicely. You're not going to be able to see them once they are in there, which is ideal. As mentioned earlier, and it should come as no surprise anyway, that buying this set in 2020 can be quite expensive, especially if you do want to buy brand new in the box like I did. You could be looking at $300. Now you can certainly go used if you can find one in good condition and save a few bucks there. But this is one I would totally recommend if it's one you're into. I was very surprised by the fact that the build was the same as the 2001 model. I didn't realize that they were so similar. I guess, like I said, there's a couple of differences, but for all intents and purposes, they are the same build. But where this set sets itself apart is its amazing figure lineup, especially those quote-unquote new stormtroopers, which aren't so new anymore, of course, but back when they were new, they were really cool. And they still are really cool, and it's worth having, I think, if you're into collecting these Imperial-style or 2005-era Star Wars sets. I think this is one you cannot go wrong with. Of course, you probably won't be playing with it. I wish I had owned this when I was younger because I think I would have loved playing with it. But of course, those days are long gone and most people buying this set nowadays won't be playing with it either. But as the collector said, it is really cool to have, I would say. So let me know what you guys think about this absolute classic in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed the video, hitting that like button would be greatly appreciated. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe for more awesome LEGO Star Wars and other LEGO videos. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.